Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now and forever. forever. We acknowledge the Turrbal and Yagrapal people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we gather, stewards on behalf of the Almighty Creator. We also pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging, and we extend that respect to all Torres Strait Islander and Aboriginal people who join us. We endeavour to walk alongside you towards justice. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and true heart. Merciful God, our, our maker, maker and, and our, our judge, judge, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Let us pray. Brightness of God's glory, whom death could not conquer, nor the tomb in prison, as you have shared our frailty in human flesh, help us to share your immortality in the Spirit. Let no shadow of the grave terrify us, and no fear of darkness turn our hearts from you. Reveal yourself to us this day and all our days, 
as the first and the last, the living one, our immortal Saviour and Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear the word of the Lord. A reading from the St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in, in, in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of, all, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. 
For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they. So we, we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Nazareth, 
who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God who raises from the dead, who is the resurrection and who brings resurrection life to the world. Amen. Would you please be seated. <clears throat> so they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The end. Well, that's how St. Mark's Gospel finishes. The solidly sealed tomb of a dead man reopened barely 40 hours after being deceased. It's kind of creepy. A young man who seems to go fossicking around in graveyards, sitting, if you please, in a grubby tomb dressed in a stainless white robe. It's bizarre. Women told to tell his disciples and Peter that Jesus would meet them in Galilee, but even with this amount of weirdity and bizarrity, said nothing. And the last words in a gospel, a book of good news, being terror, amazement and fear. Creepy, bizarre, terror, fear. The end. It's as though everything about the person, the life, the teaching, and the love of Jesus was emptied into the grave, and it all ended with terror, amazement, and fear. The end. Or the beginning. Because when we are terrorized or in fear, or lost, or dejected, or our world comes crashing down around us. We are not locked anymore in a tomb of despair. God unseals that formidable tomb and leads us to resurrection life. God gives us those new beginnings by the same power He raised Christ from the dead. Alleluia. Because when we see a world bent on war and brutality and corruption and greed and desecrating the good creation, so formidable that standing up to it seems impossible, we are not left without a voice or courage. God inspires messenger, messengers to turn up in the most unexpected places to bring good news, maybe even chooses you or me. God gives us those new beginnings by the same power He raised Christ from the dead. Alleluia. Because when our hearts or our minds or our souls are lost and numb and empty, then we are not left stranded. God sent Jesus to Galilee ahead of the disciples and so God draws us 
into Jesus' orbit as well. God gives us those new beginnings by the same power he raised Christ from the dead. Alleluia. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Not the end, the beginning. From this point, anything can happen. The detail might be scarce, and how God did it might be wrapped up in mystery. But Jesus is not shut down, nor are the hope and the possibilities of the resurrection for us and the abundance of new beginnings God offers. God gives us those new beginnings by the same power he raised Christ from the dead. This is our living Easter hope. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In this season of Easter, rather than saying the Nicene Creed, we say the much earlier creed called the Apostles' Creed, because it is the creed that is typically used at baptism, and baptism is, of course, a great motif of Easter. And so we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for God's goodness. The response to we pray to the Father is hear our prayer. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. In joy and hope, let us offer up our intercessions to the throne of the heavenly grace, that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That God may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That by God's power, war and famine may cease through all the world. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That God may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That according to God's promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That God may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. 
in the sure and certain hope that we follow Jesus in his glorious resurrection. We pray for the repose of the souls of our sisters in Christ, Mary Grimshaw and Shirley White, who died recently, and for the comfort of their families and loved ones who mourn their passing. And on the anniversaries of their death, we pray for the repose of the souls of Douglas McTaggart, Ivan Condon, Dudley Roberts, Thomas Harries, Nancy Buchanan, Keith Henderson, John College, Lorna Streak, Lynette Maloney, Brendan Barry, Robert Whitby, Charles Goodwin, John Gibson, Laura Bragg, Alfred Reed, Florence Wright, Clifford Monkland, and Alan Barker. And with all others whom we hold dearly in our hearts, we hold them to the throne of the heavenly grace, praying that God will heal them from the scars and suffering of this life and bring them to everlasting glory. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand as you're able for the greeting of peace. Christ is risen, alleluia. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We pray that you accept this sacrifice which we offer to you with humble and contrite hearts. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It <coughs> is right to give us thanks and praise. Oh, glory and honor be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. And now we give you thanks that you raised him in triumph from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, has restored us to eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. When the fullness of time was come, you sent your Son to be born of Mary. Bright image of your glory, he learnt obedience to you in all things, even to death on a cross. 
breaking the power of evil, freeing us from sin, and putting death to flight. You raised him from death, exalting him to glory, and the new day dawned. On the night he was handed over, your son Jesus Christ shared food with his friends, his companions on the way. While at table he took bread, blessed and broke it, and giving it to them said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup of wine, and giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, living God, as we obey his command, we remember his life of obedience to you, his suffering and death, his resurrection and exaltation, and his promise to be with us forever. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate his saving death until he comes. In faith we acclaim you, O Christ. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept, we pray, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration that all who eat and drink at this table may be strengthened by Christ's body and blood to serve you in the world. As one body and one holy people, may we proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. Through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, eternal God, now and forever. Blessing and honor and glory and power, yes, forever ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, we are confident to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break, alleluia, is the communion of the body of Christ. We are one body, alleluia. For though many, we share one bread.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Alleluia, let us keep the feast. This is the Lord's table. All who seek God's mercy are welcome here. You are welcome to come forward to receive Holy Communion. If you wish to receive bread only and not wine, that's fine. If you don't wish to receive Communion, you're invited to come forward for a blessing. And please hold your service booklet in your hand to signify if that is your wish.
Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Living God, make us apostles of the risen Christ. Give us joyful hearts, words of hope, and grace to recognize the Lord when he, is, when he meets us wherever we are on the road. A very good morning to you and welcome. Would you please make yourself comfortable just for some brief notices. It's wonderful to see you all here today and, and, this, and to, to be able to share in the worship um, on, of our risen Lord, give great thanks to God and to ask for God's spirit to be upon us as we go from this place today. We think the resurrection here is pretty beautiful, which is why we come back and we celebrate it every Sunday with our fabulous choir. So um, 9.30 every Sunday we have a sung mass, a said mass at 7.30, and it will be wonderful to see you along during the year, especially um, with the music that so enhances our worship. And so I take this opportunity to thank uh, Dominic and Robert and uh, all the choir and our guest trumpeter Ebony for um, their wonderful, um, great gift of music to us through this Holy Week and for lifting our worship and um, for um, still being able to breathe after all of that. I think um, we should all acknowledge our gratitude for the choir's gifts. So I wish you a holy and blessed Easter. If you're minded to uh, make uh, gifts, um, they can be left at the door. And uh, make sure that you receive a few other gifts on your way out. Otherwise, I'll have to eat them all and there'll be crosswords if I do. Would you please stand as you're able to sing the missional hymn? <laughs>
God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you to believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of our God, the holy and glorious Trinity, be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.